Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and today's episode, we're talking about the 2018 NFL Draft Class, specifically regarding the Los Angeles Rams Draft Class. Uh, so in this video, we're going to go over all the prospects that the, that the uh, Los Angeles Rams, almost said St. Louis Rams, that the Los Angeles Rams uh, drafted uh, based on their production and athleticism data to determine uh, how good they could possibly become in the future. Uh, so if you're new to the channel and new to the work that I do, all terms and definitions will be in the description. Uh, so if you're not familiar with what athleticism data is or production data, you can just get all that information uh, from the uh, description. So starting with the first pick of the draft, we have Joe Noteboom, uh, offensive tackle out of TCU. Uh, when you look at his athleticism data, he had a 17.83 Explosive lower body strength score, 94.97 speed score, 94.37 flexibility score. Uh, pretty much has all pro slash pro bowl level uh, speed and flexibility, but doesn't quite have all pro or pro bowl level explosiveness for a size. That's the only major sort of question mark with him is that he's very fast and very flexible, but not very explosive. Uh, and then, of course, when you look at the averages at the position, this kind of furthers the sort of concerns in terms of his explosive lower body strength score. But that's the only issue with him. Uh, similar to like Matt Khalil, uh, I'm trying to think of a couple other players. Jason Smith had this kind of profile as well, though Jason Smith wasn't as fast and wasn't as flexible. Time will tell if he becomes a long-term successful starter at the position. Uh, but th again, this is the only sort of issue is that he's just not very explosive in terms of his lower body. He's definitely fast, he's definitely flexible, but he's just not very explosive. Uh, then, of course, we come to the next pick of the draft in Brian Allen, offensive center out of Michigan State. So when you get to his athleticism data, he had a 50.61 explosive lower body strength score, 48.79 speed score, and a 54.97 flexibility score. Uh, doesn't quite hit the all-pro areas in terms of his athleticism, but definitely hits at least the Pro Bowl areas. Uh, and we look at the averages at the position, he looks... Pretty close to a Pro Bowler to starter. I think when it comes to Brian Allen, most likely you're looking at a starter slash Pro Bowler than an All-Pro player, but definitely pretty good profile for a center, at least when it comes to athleticism traits. Then, of course, we get to John Franklin Myers, edge out of Stephen F. Austin. Uh, when you get to his athleticism data, he had an 83.92 explosive lower body strength score, a 91.53 speed score, and a 79.79 flexibility score. Pretty decent explosiveness, pretty decent speed, pretty good flexibility. Uh, his production was at lower level competition, so I'm really not going to get into that because all, all my production data models are based on FBS production. Um, and because John Franklin Myers played at FCS, it's just not very wise to compare FCS production to FBS production in terms of trying to do a projection. Uh, but uh, he is athletic, um, so that's the major thing to kind of take away when it comes to John Franklin Myers is that he is someone who does have starter upside or higher upside because of his athleticism trait. And of course, we get to Micah Kaiser, linebacker out of Virginia. Uh, pretty good production profile, 95.57 in terms of solo tackle data. Uh, it's kind of in between an all-pro player and a Pro Bowl player when you look at the averages at the position and when you look at his athleticism traits. 83.02 in terms of explosiveness, 78.02 in terms of speed, and 85.05 in terms of flexibility. Um, essentially, he has all pro level athleticism traits. Uh, closer to a pro bowler than an all pro player when you look at the averages, but still very strong profile, productive and athletic. I think Micah Kaiser is a steal uh, when you think about where they actually were able to take him in day three. Then, of course, you get to Ogbania, Oko Ronquo, uh, Edge. From uh, Oklahoma, uh, when you get to his production data, 93.41 in terms of solo tackle data, 88.20 in terms of sack data, and 95.08 in terms of tackle for loss data. Pretty much hits all the thresholds you're looking for in terms of all pro potential and pro bowl potential in terms of his production. And when you get to his athleticism data, 89.54 in terms of explosiveness, 59.94 in terms of speed, and 76.48 in terms of flexibility. His athleticism traits are closer to a pro bowler than an all-pro player, but this is still a very strong profile. Another pick in day three uh, where it, the Rams are really doing well for themselves. I mean, uh, you, you get two players in this particular, and, and, you know, in a later round that have a very good shot to become long-term starters or better based on their uh, overall profile. Then, of course, you get to John Kelly, uh, running back out of Tennessee. 
Now, when you get to his production data, 78.68 in terms of his marks here production, doesn't hit the all pro threshold, but is above at least the five time Pro Bowl threshold. And when you look at the averages at the position, he's above what the Pro Bowl average and starter average is. Uh, when you get to his athleticism traits, 71.86 in terms of explosiveness, 42.42 in terms of speed, and 60.32 in terms of uh, flexibility for his size. Good athleticism traits doesn't have 179 or higher athleticism trait, which is necessary for all pro slash pro bowl potential. But John Kelly does have a very good shot to become a long term starter based on his overall profile. So I think he's a good sort of value pick to be sort of a rotational back in many ways when you look at his production data and his athleticism data. And of course, you get to Jamil Dimby, offensive tackle out of Maine. Uh, when you look at his athleticism traits, 43.43 in terms of explosiveness, 12.90 in terms of speed, and 47.12 in terms of flexibility. Doesn't quite have all pro or pro bowl level athleticism traits, but does have at least starter level athleticism in terms of bottom and thresholds. If you look at the averages at the position, this is where there are lots of concerns. In terms of his athleticism, the average scores are you know pretty high, and he doesn't really hit near the averages uh, in, in explosiveness, speed, or flexibility. Most likely a backup rotational guy, uh, but we'll ultimately see what happens with him. But the big question marks with him is just athleticism data. And of course, we get to Sebastian Joseph, uh, defensive tackle out of Rutgers. Uh, when you get to his production data, 53.79 in terms of solo tackle data, 47.57 in terms of sack data, and 48.05 in terms of tackle for loss data. Uh, doesn't quite hit the all pro threshold or pro bowl threshold, but does hit at least a starter threshold in terms of his production data. Uh, when you look at the averages at the position, he is someone who is definitely below what the average score is for all pro player, pro bowl player, and starter player. But I think the big reason why he was drafted was because of his athleticism traits. Uh, 81.47 in terms of explosiveness, 77.11 in terms of speed, and 84.47 in terms of flexibility for his size. Very athletic. There have been a couple players here and there that weren't really that productive, but were really athletic and went on to become long-term starters. And I think that's kind of what I think they're banking on here is, is he definitely wasn't that productive of a player at Rutgers but he has good athleticism traits, and those traits could carry him over if he develops at the NFL level. Then, of course, we get to Trayvon Young, edge out of Louisville. Uh, when you get to his uh, production data, 59.98 in terms of solo tackle data, uh, 28.81 in terms of sack data, and 42.87 in terms of tackle for loss data. Doesn't quite hit all pro potential or pro bowl potential when you look at the production uh, but uh, does have some decent athleticism traits, 42.18 in terms of explosiveness, 53.45 in terms of speed, and 75.98 in terms of flexibility for his size. Uh, doesn't really have all pro slash pro bowl athleticism across the board, but does have some interesting uh, you know, athleticism traits. I think in many ways he's someone who has sort of starter potential based on his um, athleticism traits. And, and, and similar to Sebastian Joseph. Um, you're banking on athleticism traits to kind of carry the day to a potential starter here. And then, of course, you get to Traven Howard, uh, linebacker out of TCU. Uh, great production data, 92.72 in terms of solo tackle data, which pretty much hits the all-pro potential area and pro bowl potential area in terms of the bottom and thresholds. The average is he looks closer to a pro bowl player than a all-pro player. Uh, and athleticism-wise, this is the only sort of major issue with him. Uh, only 39.82 in terms of explosives, 38.25 in terms of speed, and 59.91 in terms of flexibility for his size. Doesn't look like an all-pro slash Pro Bowl level linebacker based on his athleticism traits, but does have at least starter upside when you look at uh, the data. Uh, so I think when you're looking at a guy like Trayvon Howard, you're looking at a guy who has the potential to become a long-term starter. Uh, very similar profile to Rashawn Evans. If you go to my Titans draft analytics video, uh, I did a profile on, on Evans, and uh, Howard is kind of similar to him, except he's more productive uh, in some ways. Um, so again, this is like a starter uh, guy who uh, maybe Jolan Dunbar is a potential upside with a guy like him. And then lastly, we get to Justin Lawler, edge out of SMU. Uh, pretty good production, 84.37 in terms of solo tackle data, 77.58 in terms of sack data, and 79.55 in terms of tackle for loss data. Pretty much has... Pro Bowl potential production, uh, but his athleticism is the only thing that kind of holds him back. 16.60 in terms of, of uh, explosiveness, 10.30 in terms of speed, and 25.40 in terms of uh, flexibility for his size. Looks more like a starter than he does a all-pro slash Pro Bowl player, and that's bottom and threshold. Um, so I think it's very unlikely that Justin Lawler becomes a long-term starter because of his athleticism traits, but he definitely could become sort of a rotational kind of backup player. 
So overall, when you look at the Los Angeles Rams draft class, they really outdid themselves. When, when you're talking about where they picked day three, uh, where most of their draft picks were taken, um, and they end up coming out with guys like Micah Kaiser, Ogbonia, John Kelly, uh, you know, Trayvon Young, Traven Howard, Sebastian Joseph, John Franklin Myers. Like all those players have starter upside or better, and they got these guys in day three, um, which I think is pretty fantastic. So with the lack of draft capital that they had, they may have had one of the better draft classes in this class. Um, if you just look at it from how many players might end up becoming successful players for them. Um, but the bottom line is I do like this class. I think it's considering what they had to work with. Uh, they did get a lot of work done. Um, uh, but ultimately, let me know in the comments section below, how do you believe the Rams draft class went? And of course, uh, my name is James Coburn. You can find my other work at draftcoburn.wordpress.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at Jim Metrics. And if you like this content and you want more content like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Uh, share this video as well with anybody that you know. Hit that notification button so that you're always reminded when another video of mine drops. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.